What's going on Falcons fans, Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown, and if you're new here, welcome. In this video, we're gonna go over a topic that a lot of you wanted me to talk about, and I also wanted to talk about this as well. We're gonna go over why the Atlanta Falcons could win the NFC South in 2020. Now, I know we kind of always say the Falcons can win the NFC South every single year, but I do think that this year is a lot different than the other seasons we had, and we're going to go over why that is starting right now. Let's get it started with reason number one. Finally, the Atlanta Falcons have an updated roster. You know, it hasn't been too long since the Falcons made the Super Bowl back in 2016, but ever since 2016, we just haven't really been the same. So Thomas Dimitrov had to do something about this roster, and he did. He replaced Devontae Freeman with Todd Gurley. He replaced Vic Beasley with Dante Fowler Jr. He replaced Austin Hooper with Hayden Hurst. The only question mark is who's going to replace Desmond Trufant. Is Isaiah Oliver finally going to uh, have a good year? Is Kendall Sheffield going to surprise? Is AJ Terrell going to be a stud in his first year in the NFL? We don't exactly know what's going to happen there. But I think every Falcons fan is in agreement that Todd Gurley, Dante Fowler Jr., and Hayden Hurst are some pretty sick free agent signings, and they should help the Falcons compete this year. Instead of how from 2017 through 2019, we were kind of just average at best, maybe 2020 is different because we have better players. The next reason on why we could win the NFC South in 2020 is because there's actually something to fight for. Since 2017 through half of 2019, it felt like the Falcons were kind of in a situation of, eh, there's always next year. We still got time. Our roster is still good. But let's try and at least make the playoffs, I guess. And if it doesn't work out, oh well, I guess there's next year. But after starting 1-7 last year, everyone thought the Falcons were going to go in rebuilt mode in 2020. Everyone thought Dan Quinn was going to get fired. But the Falcons finally woke up and realized, no, we need to fight to keep Dan Quinn on the team. We need to fight to keep most of the players we have now. And so 2020 is a big year. They need to prove that keeping Dan Quinn was the right thing to do. They need to prove that their roster is still capable of winning the Super Bowl. They have a lot to prove in 2020. If they do not make the playoffs in 2020, we're going straight to reboot mode, and I don't think any Falcons fan wants to do that. And the last reason on why the Atlanta Falcons can win the NFC South in 2020 is because the NFC South opponents could decline. So let's go over all of our NFC South opponents and why, of course, they could decline. And let's not go into full depth on the Carolina Panthers because, come on, everyone knows they're in full-out rebuild mode. They're just purposely going to try and lose games in 2020 because they want to do well in the 2021 draft. Also noting that the Falcons just always beat the Panthers anyway, no matter how good or bad they are. With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, on paper, they look like they're going to be really good. They have Tom Brady at quarterback, Rob Gronkowski at tight end, Bruce Arians at head coach, you get the idea. However, there are a lot of red flags. With Tom Brady, for one thing, he's aging, like he's like 43, I think. But another thing, he's not playing for the greatest head coach of all time in Bill Belichick. How Bill Belichick is always disciplining his players and he's always taking the job seriously. Now he's playing for Bruce Arians, who is a fantastic coach, but he's definitely a lot more laid back and just simply put, he's not as good as Bill Belichick. Tom Brady's obviously going to miss that discipline and the coaching that Bill Belichick gave Tom Brady. He's going to want to miss that. With Rob Gronkowski, for one thing, he's aging like he's not going to get any younger. But another thing, your boy has kind of always been a lot lower on the Rob Gronkowski signing than the world is hyping it up. Like the world is hyping it up that Rob Gronkowski is going to be a stud in 2020. Your boy does not think this is going to work out. Like I said, for one thing, he's aging. And another thing, look, Rob Gronkowski didn't even play good the last time he was in the NFL, which was two years ago, by the way. He hasn't been on the football field in two years. The last time he played 
in the football field, he wasn't even all that good. He was just kind of mediocre. What makes you think he's going to all of a sudden be super good? And there's something in my eyes called the retirement curse. Have you noticed that every NFL player or coach that comes out of retirement, they don't end up being the same? Marshawn Lynch came out of retirement back in 2017 to play for the Raiders and even the Seahawks last year. Yeah, we never saw beast mode like how we saw back in 2013. Jason Witten came out of retirement to play for the Cowboys last year. Yeah, he's already with the Raiders. That didn't work out. And that's probably not even going to work out for the Raiders. We saw Bruce Arians last year come out of retirement to coach for the Bucks, And he had a losing season, which is another reason why I'm lower on the Bucks. Is Bruce Arians is still on that retirement curse, I like to call it. We don't even know if he's going to shake off the rust from coming out of retirement. Players that come out of retirement, man, they just simply don't end up being the same. I think there's so many reasons on why the Rob Gronkowski signing is not going to work out. Another thing, the defense and the secondary still suck. Uh, Shaquille Barrett could be a one-year wonder. And the last thing, oh yeah, they're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have a decent amount of hype every single year and it never works out. And trust me, I know this because... I live in Central Florida where you're surrounded by Bucks fans and you hear them get hyped up every single year and it doesn't work out. So what I like to think here is that it's going to be the same situation. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are hyped up yet again and it's not going to work out. So trust me, lads, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not going to be good. And with the New Orleans Saints, they might not have like a glaring problem right now. I will admit that. But we can say that Drew Brees is aging. He's like... 42 or 43 so I don't know if that's gonna work out and if you are to replace Drew Brees good luck you have Jameis Winston as your fucking backup quarterback and don't tell me he's a better backup than our backup quarterback and Matt Schaub because Matt Schaub played just fine whereas Jameis Winston threw 30 interceptions so I don't want to hear it and then you got crybaby Thomas who could annoy the locker room Overall, the culture could be dying because of how unlucky they get. I don't know. The Saints could definitely be in a situation where something isn't going to work out and we just don't know it. But I do know that the NFC South opponents could be on the decline. But those are my reasons on why the Atlanta Falcons can win the NFC South in 2020. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Other than that, I will see you guys with a video this Tuesday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Love and appreciate you all for the support, and as always, rise up.